What if the volcanoes under Africa weren't as quiet as we thought? What if, instead of being slow and predictable, they were shifting, swelling, and awakening at a speed that caught even scientists by surprise? That's the question shaking the geologic community right now. Across parts of East Africa, new data reveals that volcanic systems are on the move, literally, growing faster and behaving more dynamically than expected. And if the signals are right, we could be witnessing the earliest chapters of a profound geologic transformation. At the heart of this mystery lies the East African Rift, a massive tear in the Earth's crust stretching thousands of kilometers from Ethiopia through Kenya, Tanzania, and toward Mozambique. For years, geologists believed this process was slow and steady. Volcanoes would erupt occasionally, and the rift would widen at a glacial pace. But satellite imaging, GPS tracking, and seismic studies over the last two decades have painted a different picture. The volcanoes aren't just sitting in place. Some are moving, deforming, and showing signs of increased magma flow at rates that were once thought impossible. Take Ethiopia's Afar Depression, home to Erda Ale, often called the gateway to hell for its constantly active lava lake. Satellite data has revealed measurable surface changes around volcanic vents, some shifting by millimeters, others by several centimeters every year. That's up to five centimeters, around two inches annually. And while that sounds small, it's dramatic when you realize these are entire volcanic edifices and surrounding crust moving in unison. For context, the early Atlantic rift opened at a few millimeters per year. Parts of Africa are outpacing that. It's not just one volcano either. The movement is regional. Studies using interferometric radar have shown ground inflation at multiple volcanic centers, from Aluto in Ethiopia to Oldoinyolengai in Tanzania. Inflation means magma is accumulating beneath the surface. At Aluto, geophysical imaging suggests that magma is pooling several kilometers below, pressurizing the crust and subtly uplifting the ground. In some years, the uplift has been so fast it rivals the deformation rates seen at active volcanoes like Yellowstone or Iceland's Barterbunga. And then there are the earthquakes, small, frequent, and telling. Seismologists have tracked swarms of magnitude two to four quakes beneath these volcanic belts. They aren't destructive, but they're like the footsteps of magma, marking its path upward or sideways through the crust. In 2005, the Dabahu Fissure eruption demonstrated just how suddenly these systems can rupture. A 200 kilometer crack opened, with lava gushing out in a matter of days. Events like that were supposed to be rare. Now the geologic fingerprints suggest the region might be primed for more. But why is this happening faster than expected? One hypothesis involves the mantle plume, an upwelling of hot rock rising from deep within the Earth. Beneath East Africa, this plume is hotter and more active than earlier models suggested, melting the crust and feeding magma chambers across a wide swath of land. In areas like Afar, the crust is already thin, about 30 kilometers thick, half of what's typical for continents. That makes it easier for magma to intrude and volcanoes to shift position over time. The consequences of accelerated volcanic movement aren't just academic curiosities. Tens of millions of people live near or atop these restless systems. Towns and cities depend on roads, pipelines, and infrastructure that cross volcanic fields. Even small ground shifts can damage these structures, while increased volcanic gas emissions can affect air quality and agriculture. And of course, the ultimate concern is eruptive activity. If magma is moving more quickly and pooling at shallower depths, the odds of future eruptions rise. One striking example of how dynamic these volcanoes can be is near Gongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo, outside the main rift, but part of the larger East African volcanic system. In 2021, Niragongo erupted with little warning, sending fast-moving lava flows toward the city of Goma. Hundreds of thousands fled. The eruption also caused fissures to open beneath the city weeks later. This showed how magma can migrate unpredictably beneath populated areas, an unsettling preview of what faster movement elsewhere might mean. Now consider this on a rift-wide scale. Multiple volcanoes are inflating. Crustal stresses are increasing. New cracks are appearing in landscapes once considered stable. None of this means an imminent catastrophe, but it does mean our understanding of the timeline is changing. Instead of slow, steady drift, East Africa's rift and its volcanoes appear capable of sudden bursts of activity. The bigger picture? As magma movement accelerates, the land is responding. Some rift segments are subsiding, others are uplifting. This isn't random. 
It suggests that deep, interconnected magma systems are reorganizing. Some geologists even speculate that these changes could herald the early stages of a new ocean basin forming, eventually. That's not our immediate concern. The more pressing issue is understanding how quickly the current volcanic hazards are evolving and what warning systems need to adapt. There's still so much we don't know. Could climate change, with its impact on rainfall and groundwater, play a role in triggering crustal stresses? Could regional tectonics, the interaction between the African, Somali, and Arabian plates, be pushing magma differently than before? Scientists are racing to find answers with drones, satellites, and seismic tomography that peers deep into the Earth's interior. What's clear is that Africa's volcanoes are no longer behaving exactly as the old model suggested. They are moving, inflating, and showing dynamic behavior on human timescales. And that should make us curious, cautious, and ready to pay attention. The pace of change in Africa's rift volcanoes has startled geologists, but it has also energized them. Rarely do scientists have the chance to study an active continental breakup while it happens. Usually the evidence of such massive events is locked away in ancient rocks or scattered fossils of past oceans. But today, satellites are capturing daily snapshots and sensors buried deep in the earth are recording the planet's pulse in real time. One of the most striking studies comes from a joint Ethiopian and British research effort at the Aluto Volcanic Complex. Located in Ethiopia's Rift Valley, Aluto has long been known for its geothermal energy potential. But satellite radar has revealed alternating cycles of inflation and deflation over just a few years, sometimes more than 20 centimeters of uplift, followed by subsidence. To visualize this, imagine an area the size of a city slowly rising by nearly the height of a soccer ball, then sinking again. The changes are too fast to fit traditional rift models and suggest a magma plumbing system repeatedly filling and draining. These cycles matter. They suggest magma is mobile and actively pressurizing the crust. In one study, geophysical imaging indicated molten material as shallow as 5 kilometers beneath the surface. That's not just geological trivia. It's the kind of depth where a shift in pressure could crack open new fissures. Scientists have even compared these patterns to activity in Iceland and Hawaii, two of the world's most volcanically active regions. The fact that East Africa is starting to show similar dynamics challenges the assumption that rifting continents are always geologically quiet until they fully split, and it isn't just a luto. Across the rift, similar signs of inflation are recorded at Erta Ale, Corbeti, and Old Oño Lengai. The last one is particularly intriguing. Known as the Mountain of God, Old Doño Lengai produces carbonatite lava, which is unusually fluid and cool, around 500 to 600 degrees Celsius, compared to basalts over 1,000. While this lava poses a unique hazard due to its speed and mobility, what alarms scientists more is how the volcano's edifice is shifting. GPS stations have recorded lateral ground motion, meaning parts of the volcano are literally creeping sideways under pressure. The Dabahu fissure eruption in 2005 remains the most dramatic example of just how quickly things can escalate. A massive dike intrusion forced open a crack about 60 kilometers long initially, eventually extending up to 200 kilometers over several months. Entire segments of crust moved horizontally by as much as eight meters, about the length of a large truck, in days. What makes this even more remarkable is that these dike intrusions sometimes precede surface eruptions acting as underground rivers of magma that break apart the crust without always erupting. The acceleration in such dike events across East Africa indicates that the rift is anything but dormant. Volcano movement here isn't just about magma inflation or cracks in the ground. It's tied to a broader tectonic story. The African plate is slowly splitting into two. The Nubian plate to the west and the Somali plate to the east. The Red Sea and Gulf of Aden are actively spreading and these zones connect directly into East Africa. The tectonic forces at play are massive and intertwined. Stress changes in one region can trigger adjustments hundreds of kilometers away. Another dimension of the story involves gases. Volcanic movement is often accompanied by changes in gas emissions. Sulfur dioxide emissions have been recorded around some East African volcanoes, suggesting magma is degassing at shallow depths. This not only affects local air quality, but also gives scientists clues about the depth and pressure of magma. 
Instruments measuring gas flux have picked up variations matching ground deformation cycles, further confirming that magma movement is more dynamic than previously thought. With this comes the question of risk. What does faster than expected mean for the millions of people living along the rift? Consider Addis Ababa, home to more than 5 million people. It sits just west of several active volcanic centers, or Nairobi, with nearly 5 million people itself, located near the southern Kenyan rift. Even modest eruptions could disrupt air traffic, agriculture, and water supplies. In regions with limited resources for monitoring and emergency response, the consequences would be magnified. Some experts warn that Africa's growing urbanization increases the potential impact of future volcanic activity. Roads, pipelines, and power lines often cross or even run alongside rift valleys and volcanic fields. When a crack, scientists use numerical models to simulate what might happen if rift acceleration continues. Some models show more frequent dike intrusions like Dabahu's. Others predict clusters of eruptions similar to Iceland's fissure eruptions, where multiple vents open over months or years. Even if such events are small compared to global super eruptions, they could still disrupt agriculture, displace populations, and alter regional climate temporarily due to ash and gas emissions. Could we ever see a chain reaction? Multiple rift segments breaking at once? While that's not likely in the immediate future, geologic history suggests it has happened before. When the Atlantic opened, massive lava floods erupted across what is now Brazil and West Africa. While East Africa hasn't shown evidence of such large-scale flood basalt events yet, the underlying mantle plume might have the potential over geologic time. It's a sobering reminder that continents are not permanent fixtures. They evolve, fracture, and even vanish over millions of years. But before anyone jumps to apocalyptic conclusions, it's important to balance perspective. These changes, while fast in geologic terms, are still slow for humans. The rift won't split into an ocean tomorrow. Most volcanoes in the region erupt modestly compared to giants like Tambora or Pinatubo. What makes the current findings extraordinary is how they reshape our timeline and our understanding of volcanic hazards. For the people living there, the greatest need is improved monitoring and preparedness, not panic. Encouragingly, International collaborations are expanding seismic and satellite monitoring networks across the region. Drones are being used to sample volcanic gases in real time. Seismic tomography is providing three-dimensional images of magma systems deep beneath the crust. Each new discovery helps scientists refine hazard maps and develop early warning protocols. In time, these efforts could save thousands of lives by detecting magma movement before eruptions occur. All of this points to a profound truth. The Earth is far more dynamic and interconnected than we often realize. A change deep under Ethiopia can ripple out to Kenya, Tanzania, or even the Red Sea. And as our instruments become more precise, we're only just beginning to see how alive our planet truly is. The big question remains, what happens next? Will magma intrusions accelerate further? Could we see new volcanic vents open in places that have been dormant for millennia? Might the combination of tectonic and volcanic forces eventually trigger a tipping point in how East Africa evolves? These are the frontiers of geoscience today. And this brings us to the final act of our investigation, the broader implications of faster volcano movement and what it means not just for East Africa, but for humanity's understanding of planetary change itself. Volcano movement in Africa is more than a local story. It's a global wake-up call. It forces us to rethink our assumptions about how continents evolve, how hazards develop, and how interconnected Earth systems really are. The acceleration in East Africa is a reminder that our planet's surface is just the skin of a vast, restless interior. Beneath our cities and farmland lies a world of molten rock and shifting plates, and it never sleeps. In the coming decades, we may see more ground cracks in Kenya and Ethiopia, more inflation at volcanoes like Aluto and Lingai, and perhaps the occasional eruption surprising communities not used to volcanic threats. With proper monitoring, these events don't have to become tragedies. 
Knowledge is our best defense, and the science being done today could prevent disasters tomorrow. But the deeper story is awe-inspiring. We're witnessing in real time the earliest stages of a new ocean's birth. Someday, millions of years from now, East Africa may stand as an island continent surrounded by seawater. While we won't be here to see that day, understanding the process makes us participants in Earth's long history, not just bystanders. For now, the focus is on staying informed. Scientists are calling for greater investment in geologic monitoring and for public education, so communities understand the signs of volcanic unrest. The more we know about these restless systems, the more resilient we become. So what do you think? Could this accelerating volcanic movement change Africa's future faster than anyone imagined? Should we be preparing for more than just minor eruptions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this investigation fascinating, hit the like button, share this video with others who love science and discovery, and subscribe for more deep dives into Earth's most extraordinary mysteries. The ground beneath Africa is shifting, and its volcanoes are moving faster than we expected. The question now is not if the Earth will change, it's how ready we'll be when it does.